Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and I'm just back from a little um, trip out to Leeds to pick some um, some vintage um, hardware up and what I thought we'd do, I, I thought we'd do a video or just a bit of a general vintage computer -y, old PC type um, video and have a look at some of the things I've picked up recently and what I thought I'd do is I'd start it off with just doing a bit of a part 2 on this um, old vintage bonding router that I uh, picked up the other day um, quite interesting, I've been messing about with it, um, it's quite interesting really, it's the, the motherboard in it, it's a, um, it's a via technologies board, and it's, um, EPIA dash, um, is it a LN, and actually I've got it up on the, um, I've got it up on the computer here, let me just, um, zoom you into that, you can have a look at a picture of it. It's a lot easier to look at that picture than it is to look at my um, the actual thing because I've not took it out yet. Uh, can you see that from there? Unfortunately, I can't really move the, the camera because I've got the room that crammed with crap at the moment. But you get a general idea there. I know you can't see it because of that there. But uh, basically, it's um, an industrial motherboard. Um, it was designed specifically for this kind of application you know sticking um, in a router or any like industrial hardware and um, there's a chap on YouTube called um, I think his YouTube channels High Treason 610 or something like that and you know, he goes into a lot of old PC stuff into massive massive detail I mean into like architecture and things like that he, really knows his stuff on like 90s uh, early 2000s hardware and um, he's mentioned these via technologies boards and from what I can gather and actually doing some diagnostics just kind of prove this out is if you remember in the 90s if you um, had a computer and you was basically skint like I was you ended up with a Cyrix processor in it I remember building my first um, P200 and this would have been in about 98 I, I was at college yeah I had a Pentium 60 at the time and I, I worked at um, it must have been in about 98 because I must have been driving because I worked at Manchester Airport um, and I saved up all my uh, money and all my spare cash from that job and I built myself a um, Pentium 200 um, computer but I couldn't afford the um, Intel processor and ended up having to buy, um, go with the Cyrix um, processor it was actually pre-MMX as well um, MMX came out like a month after that the Cyrix MMX processor and it was absolutely good I had to <laughs> save up for another couple of months and then I could sell my P200 processor and buy the MMX version and my board was compatible with it anyway I digress so basically Cyrix in the 90s were a budget CPU uh, manufacturer I don't know whether IBM didn't end up buying them out and they ended up being using like really low end IBM stuff and then apparently what happened to them was um, they were bought by Via Technologies and the embedded CPU in this is actually basically a Cyrex chip um, you've got uh, basically you've got um, the North Bridge, the South Bridge and the CPU are uh, like BGA, or, uh, BGA um, chips under that heat sink there and they are straight on the board you can't upgrade the CPU in this or anything and it's from what I can gather it is basically a, um, a beefed up um, mid night well late 90s um, Cyrix CPU that they use uh, which actually means that this thing has got the a potential to be um, quite a cool late 90s retro gaming rig Basically, if you're like you, well, I've got Doom playing on it now, and Doom plays flawlessly on it. No frame. Well, you wouldn't. You expect Doom to play flawlessly. It's got a gigahertz processor and um, half a giga RAM in it. But you know, Doom, Quake, Duke 3D, anything like that. It's really is a rather a good um, board. Like, see, so you've got a one gigahertz Cyrix um, processor in there you've got 500 uh, meg of RAM and it's got a, re a reasonably decent um, graphics accelerator in there as well 
um, 2D graphics accelerator. It's quite quite beefy. It's quite powerful. Um, obviously, you can pull the specs up for this board, um, and you can see for yourself it's, it's quite good for like the retro gaming um, stuff. Plus, it's also got the advantage that it's got both composite and S video out on it. So, if you wanted to game on an old school big CRT telly, you could do with this. Um, it's got a few slight disadvantages for being like a DOS retro gaming PC, and that's basically down to the onboard sound on it. It's got um, an AC97 um, sound chip in it, which is part of the South Bridge, and there are no DOS drivers for it. So, if you was to use this in a retro gaming rig, you would have to use the one PCI slot that it's got for a, PC, a DOS compatible PCI sound card to actually be able to um, get some audio out of it. Apart from that, it would make a really, really cool um, basis of a, like I said, a late 90s um, retro gaming rig. I mean, Unreal Tournament, anything like that should run really, really nicely on it. Um, I'll, I'll fire it up and just show you how... Um, I've only got Doom and uh, Wolfenstein on it at the moment. Um, and it's not staying together, it will be being pulled apart um, very soon because I'm not keeping it as this computer. <coughs> I, have, um, I have plans for the case, I have designs on the case. Because I was planning on using this as um, a basis for a, um, a DVR for a CCTV system. And um, the 1 gigahertz CPU won't really cut it for the software that I'm um, intending on running. So I will be, um, I don't know if you heard the pop there, because actually I've got audio hooked up to it. There is a, a driver someone has created to um, allow DOS to be able to communicate with the sound card in it, unfortunately. It's got like one application that can allow it to play WAV files. I actually thought it was a DOS driver for the um, AC97, but it's not. It's just an application someone's wrote which directly communicates with the sound card, does allow the sound card to communicate through DOS but there's just this one thing that someone's wrote for it which is a WAV file player but um, apart from that, like I said unfortunately, the sound card that's built into this board isn't DOS compatible but apart from that, it's, this is running by the way on that SSD card and it's um, just got free DOS on it but um, I was just messing about as you can see with, oh my god, um, and this this bloody monitor is not ideal. Um, I suppose it's okay for down here, but I wouldn't use this anywhere else. Because every time the screen refreshes, you've got to reset reset it to one side like that. It doesn't retain that setting at all. I mean, it could be something to do with the uh, monitor. I don't know. It could have a, a bad storage cap in there. And it's not for retaining settings. I don't know. Or it could just be crap. Anyway, um, we're in there. Let's have a look at games. I'll, 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 let's have a look at utils at first anyway. Because like I said, I've put a little diagnostics program I found um, online that runs under DOS on here. So, Oh yeah, there's um, I put, that's it, um, DOS sound, which is what I was messing about with. But like I said, I couldn't. All it'll do is play, the, play a WAV file. Uh, and mouse obviously is a mouse driver because I was um, I was playing Doom <laughs> last night and I did want a mouse to play Doom. Uh, but this is this is NSSI so CD. Um, and I just looked I just looked online for a DOS um, benchmark well not benchmark but diagnostics program and I just downloaded this it was only a couple of megabytes so. Um, it's obviously you're massively out of date but as you can see it does basically tell you what the computer is it's telling you that you know, it's got a, a gigahertz processor um, it's um, 886 based um, it tells you about the multiplier it's basically it's a um, 100 megahertz um, CPU times 10 so it's got a 10 times multiplier on it um, operating system's obviously wrong because it's running free DOS. It's not running um, 95 or OSI 2. We have got a PS2 mouse connected to it. In fact, yeah, we've got the mouse drivers installed, so we actually can use the mouse on this. Uh, it has got some benchmarking facilities. Obviously, this thing's going to be faster than anything this um, software was originally written for. I think this software is like 
mid 90s. Uh, let's have a look on the details. Let's see what it tells us about the processor. Well, there we see it's a via Cyrex 3. Now, I believe what I had was um, a Cyrex M2, I think it was called. I think it was 200 megahertz. Um, I think there was an M3 out as well, so I wonder if this is based on the Cyrex M3. Um, via C7 um, processor at 1000 megahertz. It's a virtual 8086. CPU type original OEM processor. Let's see if it tells us any um, more info. Just revision numbers and things like that. I'm sure people that are really into the PCs will know a lot more what this means than um, I do. Let's have a look on the co processor. Yeah, 32 bit co processor. And it's a real co processor, not emulated. Let's have a look under benchmarks of CPU. As you can see, as, as I was expecting, I mean. Yeah, it's probably late 90s, this software, because, I mean, the, the fastest thing it's got on there is, uh, like, a Pentium 3. Yeah, um, what's that, a Pentium 3 at about eight, 800 megahertz. And this thing's um, obviously topping way above that. Just flicking about a fair old bit, though. There's my um, poor old um, Cyrix 686. Um, well, that's, that's, that's the MX version. Mine wasn't, wasn't even the MX, MMX version. The PR200 right down there at the bottom. Oh, and they had the, M, the M2 PR266 as well. I remember them. They were a bit, um, a little bit later. I went straight from that. I had that for quite a few years until I built a... Um, built a um, second hand out of all second hand bits um, dual processor um, Pentium 2 rig I think there were 400, two, 450 megahertz Pentium 2's in that anyway uh, yeah so I'm, I'm, ra I'm rambling aren't I let's get out of this um, you've seen it's, it's quite zippy and fast anyway for uh, what it is exit yeah Let's go and um, have a look at some games. Unfortunately, I couldn't get um, Duke 3D to load, but I think it's just the... Um, I couldn't find my um, memory stick with my version that I know definitely works on. Um, so I just downloaded it off um, one of the um, Sharewire sites, and I don't think it actually works, that version. So I, don't, I can't say that it definitely doesn't work on here. Um, let's play Doom. So you go you know, pretty sure that um, Doom's going to run very, very nicely on a one gigahertz processor. And obviously, you know, yeah, no slowdown at all, really, full frames. So yeah, it would make a quite a nice um, retro gaming rig. I so said your only real um, your only real problem with that is the um, lack of audio. And I said it has got one standard PC. If you was to put this in a standard case, uh, let me just pull you down. Um, if you was to put it in a standard case, that motherboard. You do have one P. I mean, it's got a riser in it now to give you two PCI slots, but you don't need to use that. You could remove that and just use the one PCI slot down there. Put a, um, I don't know, um, is this Sound Blaster Gold um, PC compatible, uh, DOS compatible, I think it is. You have to buy the later PCI um, DOS compatible sound card. Stick that in there. And it would really be quite a nice um, retro gaming um, board, or the basis of. The only thing it is actually missing, as far as I'm aware, because I can't spot it anywhere, I couldn't see it when I had a look, is a game port. It doesn't have a game port. But you've got plenty of USB on there. I'm sure there's something um, that could be done, although USB DOS drivers I don't know about. 
Uh, but if you're happy with keyboard and mouse for things like Doom, Quake, and real stuff like that, you've absolutely no problems at all. It's got standard PS2 keyboard and mouse ports on it. Um, it's got um, plenty, like I said, it's got plenty of USB and everything for like that for keyboards, mice, stuff like that. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to leave um, doing about this anyway, because like I said, the next thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to rip the motherboard out of it. Uh, let's switch it off. Come on, shut down. There we go, that's off. Uh, I'm going to rip the motherboard out of it. I'm going to I'm going to keep that, and what I'm going to do with that is I'm. Um, People don't uh, cry at me about this, but it is useless. But I mean, it's it's basically just a um, SD hard drive. I'm going to take a Dremel to it, and I'm just going to cut, basically cut it off along there. Cut, well, I can desolder them. I'll need to leave um, the power connector because it actually takes 3.3 volts into power the card. In fact, actually, I could probably modify that so it took 5 volts and put a 3.3 volt um, voltage reg on here. Uh, but basically, yeah, I'm going to cut that off there, get rid of that, because it's absolutely no use at all. But I'll keep that part of the board and just use it as a um, IDE to um, compact flash adapter um, for a, a retro build. I mean, I might even use that motherboard and that for a retro build, for a little retro DOS build or something. I do have ideas in my mind for something like that, actually. But anyway... Apart from that, like I say, I'm going to strip this case out completely of all the um, all the goodies in there, and I'll probably get rid of some of it. Some of it I'll recycle into other stuff. But I've got this is what I picked. So I picked this up a while ago. It's nothing. Um, it's nothing new. I'm just going to stick that board on top because it has got um, a number on there that I don't want displaying. It's the original um, owners of this thing. But uh, again, I picked this up dirt cheap on eBay, Ugh. and um, it came with um, six um, colour CCTV cameras, and a mate of mine needed some extra CCTV cameras for a um, setup I was helping him with, and it was cheaper to buy this entire setup. I paid, I think I paid, including the cameras and everything, and delivery and everything, about twenty quid for it off eBay. Again, solder spares are repair, but the whole system actually worked perfectly. I did actually connect it all up, and all the cameras work. This um, records perfectly, it views perfectly, and everything. But it's a rather nice um, case, and I actually, when I bought it. I weren't thinking about CCTV for myself. Like I said, I uh, let my mate have the um, cameras. I've got loads and loads of um, little basic black and white CCTV cameras. These were a bit more fancy, a bit more advanced. They had um, PTZ control on them and stuff. And they, they were compatible with the controller that he had. Um, and originally my thought with this is it's a really nice case. I've got a board that will fit this case. A... Um, mini ITX board uh, which has currently got a um, dual core on it but it is a board which I can hack to take one of the um, quad core Xeons like I did with my um, main computer I've got that I'm actually uh, running at the moment so the plan for this the actual case is it's going to um, get a new motherboard in it and it's going to be a little quad core um, Xeon workstation but the main the it, because it's uh, mini ITX the board out of this will fit in that case. So basically I'm going to transfer, I don't need the CD drive obviously, uh, I'm going to transfer everything out of that into that and make my um, DVR for my um, home security system in that case. And like I said, that'll get, uh, that will get repurposed. So all these bits, they are going to go to something, they are actually going to get used for uh, one thing and another. Anyway, that's through all them um, bits. Let's get to some um, slightly more, some slightly more retro stuff, shall we? Um, we'll get this, we'll get this out of the way. I was going to do this as a few takes, but sod it. No, I'll just do it as one, um, one. We'll keep that about. We might, we might be able to use that in the next part of the video, actually. So I'm just switch that out of the way. Uh, we will need a different keyboard. Um, in fact, I do have a different keyboard ready for the next thing. 
because basically this is, what, uh, I won't bother putting that board back in because after I've done this video like I said I probably will start um, taking this thing apart let's get all them, uh, them little Phillips screws I've taken out and put them in a nice little box somewhere where they're not going to uh, there we go so this will get um, stripped down now and it's even cool that I've got the rack here as far as so I can um, I was going to get a little for you rack cabinet from under the stairs to put my um, network hub in so this could go and live alongside that just above the network hub that'd be a nice position for it actually it means I've got a good location to run all my CCTV wires to so anyway let's get that out of the way and I will show you this is what I have um, been over to Leeds for today now I spotted this on eBay and um, I put a it basically it had an opening bid of um, three pounds on it and all it was described as was old computer put power up it and drawers open nothing and don't doesn't have a monitor for it doesn't know anything about it um, the drawers open on it and that's all he can say and it's got two flat two um, CD-ROM drives in the front but it did have a 3.5 inch floppy drive in it so that kind of like put my interest so I looked at some of the other pictures and I noticed it had um, an AT keyboard connector on the back so that put my interest as well so I thought and it was collect only in Leeds now Leeds is about 20-ish miles away this the, the, the the closest part of Leeds to me is about 20-ish miles away from where I live so I thought you know what I'll put a three quid bid on it and see what anyway I won it at the three quid as you do um, so I went over to Leeds and I picked it up I will say I didn't give the guy three quid for it I did give him a fiver for it and it cost me probably about another probably eight or nine quid in diesel because it was right on the other side of Leeds so it was an eight, about nearly an 80 mile round trip to um, collect it but man, hey, it was a day out you know when I had a nice coffee on the motorway and what have you but anyway I'll show you what I uh, what I picked up and that is hopefully you can see that it's looking very dark on my camera but we have got a beige box a probably 19, mid 1990s beige box. Say so it's probably been upgraded sometime. Um, in the fact we've got a um, 32 speed CD ROM drive, and then we've got a CD rewriter. It's one of these cheapy, cheapy CD rewriters. Uh, 52 speed, 3252. Um, let's have a look on the back. Sorry if this is looking a little bit. Let me see if I can bring you down. Is that lighting the picture slightly? Yes, it has. Oh, that's worked immensely. I might show you a quick another look around the front. But anyway, let's have a look around the back. So we've got standard AT power supply, AT keyboard connector, PS2 mouse connector. But obviously, this is quite an earlier one of the earlier boards because it's actually on a, um, a riser card well not on a riser card it'll be a little connector that then plugs onto the motherboard rather than one that uses that little hole next to the AT connector which was as AT was going out you tended to get the AT connector and then a little PS2 connector next to it this is an earlier board where you got a little pin header on the board and you used a little riser like that to take your PS2 connector we have then got again standard serial and parallel um, you've got provision for it on the case there but they've not actually gone that way whoever built this one they've, again they've probably put it they, it will most likely be on board yeah, I'm not saying this thing is that early that it's on a separate card although it possibly could be we don't know this could be anywhere from I say early 486 era up to late Pentium 1 era in fact I think my 200, P200 board that I talked about earlier was one of the, like the last boards you could get that was AT only um, I don't think it was one of them because that did have a uh, PS2 next to it there uh, I think this is probably 
very early Pentium, perhaps like up to like Pentium 75, possibly Pentium 100, or it's 486. I don't think it's 386. You don't really see 386s with CD writers in them. But um, I reckon it's either late 486, early Pentium. But um, it's, that's probably on board, that won't be. It could, if it was a very early 486, that could be a card. I know my 486 SX25, the first like, PC I actually bought with proper money. Um, that had the um, I.O. card on a separate um, VESA card. We've got a VGA connector, obviously. Uh, we don't know what VGA graphics we've got. That's a serial. That's what makes me think these are all on board as well. And that these are just risers that have got the um, actual... Um, connector on and then you've just got a ribbon going on to the motherboard because that's a 25 pin serial and you don't really get 25 pin serial as a, as a standalone card although that could just be being piggybacked off, piggybacked off that one we have then got a sound card we don't know what it is but I paid a fiver for this thing where can you buy like a 16 bit, because I presume it will be 16 it could be a PCI one in which case it could go with that board that we've just been talking about but something that's probably going to be DOS compatible for a fiver and then we've got a modem so obviously I mean you, you know scrap but um, it kind of dates it as well I'll give you a quick another quick peek around the side actually the case is at really nice condition and it's actually smaller than I thought it was I thought it was a bit of a bigger um, case it's funny how pictures can be a bit deceiving but um, yeah you can see it a bit better on this I'm sorry the lighting's so bad like I said when I get the new workshop side out and it is getting on my slab foundation from the shed that I'm actually moving is actually I've actually managed to finish it so um, I'll be moving the old garden shed and the construction of the new workshop will be beginning fairly soon but anyway like I said a quick show around the front again like I said we've got the two drives there we've got our standard three and a half inch floppy proper power button and that's it uh, with no turbo or anything it's quite a clean um, looking case I am I think I was I was tempted, do we just plug it in and switch it on and find out what it is that way? Or do we actually... Which way shall we go? Shall we open it up and have a squeeze inside, then power it up? Or shall we just plug, so plug it in and see what happens? You know what, let's plug it in and see what happens. We've got the monitor already connected up. In fact, I'll zoom you up onto the monitor so you can see um, see the monitor. And we'll give it the bare the bare essentials that it needs to um, live. So let's plug the monitor in. In fact, well, slightly more. We'll give it a keyboard as well. Actually, I actually thought ahead for once, and um, it is very dusty. But uh, I did dig a uh, slightly dusty AT keyboard out because I've only got PS2 and USB ones down here. So we'll plug um it is an AT, it's not an AT, an ATXT one that's not switched right, let's double check that. Because I remember spending a couple of hours once trying to debug um, a computer and I had accidentally switched the keyboard to XT mode. And that was many years ago. Right, let's plug that, um, plug that into the AT um, keyboard hole. There we go, that's plugged in. So we've got a keyboard. We've got that, let's um, let's give it some power and see what happens. Now what have I done with that IEC lead? What have I done with the IEC lead that I've, I've just used on the um, other computer? Ah, there it is. We've got IEC, so let's, um, let's see what happens when we plug it in. Let's um, power up it. Well, it seems to want to live. We've got a hard drive. Uh... Can I smell something a bit funny though? And I'll switch off again. There's a bit of a I think it might just be air freshener actually. I don't think it's anything um, anything too nasty. I think it's, that might actually be air freshener. 
Let's try it again. See the screen flickered. The screen's flickering a couple of times. Then we just get a blue screen. No video signal. But I can hear a hard drive, um, a hard drive running in there. Well, seeing we didn't get anything on screen, we've got no choice, have we? We better um, open it up and take it apart. Let's uh, disconnect. We'll disconnect everything, and I'll spin it round. At least we can have a look. Um, we can have a look inside it. I don't think we're going to do any repair work on this today because we have got another computer to um, get in and have a quick um, have a quick look at. But there's no harm in having a quick look and at least seeing what we've. Um, Seeing what we've got. Let's see, unfortunately, because it didn't boot, it didn't fire up, we didn't actually learn anything. Apart from the fact that it doesn't boot and doesn't fire up. Let's see if I can um, reach my uh, my little toolbox, which I've rather stupidly left at the wrong side of the room, and the camera's in the way. Oop, there we go. I've got it. Right. Let's find a, um, a Phillips screwdriver. There's a Phillips. Right, and let's uh, let's get inside this thing and see what we've got. In fact, what I can do, I can take you up a little bit on the tripod, and then just tip you down so you get a little bit of a better look inside. And let's see what we've got in here. So the motherboard's completely dead. I've got plenty of 486 in early Pentium boards. Some of them might be able to do rather a cool build. Right, let's have a look what we've got. All oh, right, we're not well. We're doing quite nicely. I think we may have. What have we got? What have we got? We've got a socket seven board. So we are to talking fairly early Pentium era. That's actually quite good. Um, let's have a look what we've got though. We have got a um, S3 Verge DX. Um, I think that's about a 4 megabyte. It might be more. Um, video card. Actually not a bad. Not a bad at all video card there. I'm not sure on the hard drive. We've got hard drive. Oh no it's floppy over there. Um, I can't see the hard drive yet. It could be underneath the um, power supply. Let's see what sound card we've got, because that's what I'm interested in. It's a, um, it is a 16-bit sound card, which is nice. Is it something nice, or is it something generic? I think it's something fairly generic, but um, let's see. Yeah, I think it's based on an OPL chip. Um, if I tell you what, I'll pull it out, and we can have a proper, um, we can have a proper look at it. But yeah, we've got a Socket 7 motherboard, so we are in the Pentium era. Let's have a look at this uh, sound card, see what we've got. We're obviously in fairly early Pentium era, reasonably early anyway. Let's see what the, um, let's see what the sound card is. It's got the, um, it's an Opti chipset. It's a fairly generic, um, like Sound Blaster clone, I think. I think is it a bit, is it a clone like a um, Sound Blaster Pro or something like that? I think it should be. It should sound okay. I'll do a little bit more research on that. But I mean, that's not bad. At least it's not like one of the super super cheap um, sound cards that were out there. And this was the area where we were just starting to get some of the, you know, um, Windows only. I mean, this was what, Win95, just getting into Win98 kind of era. And there was starting to become, you know, like this, the um, Windows only sound cards. But like I said, I think we've got something which is quite nice in MS DOSA here. We've actually got a big old school um, modem in here. This is a modem which would work under MS-DOS. Again, same with the sound cards, but more so with the modems. 
I think it was Connexon to something like that. I remember you could buy a modem uh, at my local or like um, wholesale computer place for like four quid. Uh, but they only worked in Windows. There wouldn't. There was no DOS drivers for them. They used. Um, I think they used a lot of software. Um, software to drive them actually. Uh, but that isn't. That is a uh, a full-on um, hardware modem. So it's basically useless nowadays. But because it isn't one of them super cheap crappy ones, it is a 16-bit ISA um, card. I will be keeping that definitely. Let's see what it is. I'm not sure exactly what it is actually. I can't see a make on it. It's a Rockwell, um, it's got a standard Rockwell um, chipset you see on a lot of um, modems from this era. It's got his badger approved sticker on it, but um can't see a um an actual manufacturer on it. And I can't actually see a reason why this thing is uh, refusing to boot either. Can't see anything let's get that back in its seat. Like I said, we're not going to be doing any major um repair work on this thing today. So we've got another computer to um, get to, and this video is already getting quite long. But I've not done a long, longish video for a while, so never mind. Uh, that's a bit concerned. We also have a couple of wires just hanging in midair here. And what they um, ah, they've come off the um, speaker. They've just um, broken off the um, they've broken off the speaker there. So that's nothing. Um, that's nothing major. Although if they were connected. We would at least get some, uh, probably some postcode beeps, and it would be giving us some idea what's wrong with this, um, what's wrong with this thing. I can't see any corrosion on the board. I can't, haven't yet spotted the um, the backup battery for the uh, CMOS. Oh, there it is down there. It does have some corrosion. It's a little button cell, but it does have um, a little bit of corrosion on the top of it. I can't see it leaking all around it though. I don't think that's the issue. I might pop the um, heat sink off the CPU and we can have a quick squiz see what the um, CPU actually is. And what I haven't spotted yet is if this thing uses um, early um, dim memory modules or it actually uses SIMS still. That'll kind of give us an idea of um, date. The hard drive is where I thought it's um, right there underneath the power supply. And I believe those are SIMS. I'd have to take the power supply out to confirm it because they are actually underneath the. Um, I don't suppose it's only a couple of screws into. Let's just whip the um, power supply out and we can have a quick squiz down there. But I do think I do believe that it's uh, it's quite an early Pentium board. This because I think it is actually on Sims still. They'll probably be um, Edo Sims, won't they? Edo, Edo RAM, I think it was um, called back in the day. I think I've got a load of them kicking about somewhere in the box. Right, let's have a look. This will confirm it anyway. We just pop the, uh, and we can get an idea of what the hard drive is as well. Yep, we're on. Um, interesting. The board it can actually it's got one dim socket and then um, it's got four uh, sim sockets and it's marked here. On the first one, 16 MB EDO. Now, are they 16 um, meg EDO RAM each? In which case, that's 64 meg of RAM it's got. Or are they 4 meg each? In which case, it's got 16 meg in total. We don't know. Well, actually, we won't know that till we can get this thing to actually run. But I do, uh, I do know for a fact that I've got a couple of early um, DIM modules of about 128 meg ones or something like that. I think we've even got some 32 and 64 meg ones kicking about. So we could possibly upgrade it that way. I've probably got some um, bigger EDOs. I think I've got some, definitely got some 8 meg ones if they're only 4s. If the 16s it's got 64 meg, that's more than enough than this thing will ever need. The hard drive is a Seagate, uh, it's one of the old Seagate medalists. Um, let's see if we can see a size on it. 
I'd expect it to be possibly around the 500 megabyte to a gigabyte. I can't actually see a. Um, I'm trying to read it upside down as well. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's 4 gig. So it's, it's got a 4 gig um, IDE hard drive in it. Put the um, put the screws for the um, power supply back in. We might do a full video on um, trying to troubleshoot and diagnose what's wrong with this thing, and then actually get it um, up and running. We don't know what's on the hard drive, although it did sound like it was trying to boot from the hard drive. Um, we just weren't getting any um, any video. Let's have a quick last squiz at what the um, CPU actually is. Because that's nice and easy to do with these. You just pop the uh, pop the cooler off. Ooh, and what have we got down there? We yeah, have to clean some grease off. I think it might be a Pentium 75 or something like that, or Pentium 120. Oh no! I don't know what speed it is, but it's actually an MMX processor. Now they started at 166 up to, well, they keep going into Pentium 2's, Pentium 3's, but um, I think like 166 to 266. But it is a genuine, it is a genuine Intel um, Pentium MMX processor. It's not like the um, crappy Cyrix that I used to have. It's not even like the halfway house AMD um, K5 and K6. It would be the K6 if it was the um, MMX version, wouldn't it? Um, so that's interesting. So we've got a um, genuine Intel um, MMX CPU in there. Interesting to find what speed that's running at. But I do have, I think, some, uh, if, like I say, if, if that CPU is faulty, I don't actually think I have any more um, early, like, 200 MMX CPUs, actually, in any of my stuff. I know I've got earlier Pentium CPUs, which this board would actually support. It'll support a Pentium 75. Um, in fact, I don't have a computer in my collection. A full computer, I must admit, I've got enough parts to build one. But I don't actually have a computer in my collection of this. This is very similar, like I said, like, apart from the fact that that's an Intel rather than a Cyrex. Uh, this is very, very similar to the um, computer that I built. I don't think my hard drive was quite that big. And then I put, I know I put a SCSI, um, I put a SCSI array in it because I got um, a SCSI card and a load of SCSI hard drives very cheap. I had them all in an external old um, 286 server case next to it, and it was bigger than the bloody computer. And it was still only about 2 gig. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I'll put the case back on this one, and we can have a look at computer number 3. Now, computer number 3 is a bit more of a classic, and it is definitely a bit of, a, uh, a bit of an oddball and a bit of a rarity. There's still a PC just about a PC anyway. Oh, I remember putting these old cases back together. Um, they were always a bugger to screw together. Right, now where's my screwdriver gone? There it is. So that is definitely going to get its own proper video, it might even be a few videos on um, getting that up and running and probably getting it running um, if it's, I don't know what OS is on there, like say, even if the OS is salvageable or anything um,
There is a little bit of yellowing on that case from um, it sitting the sunlight to one side of it, but it's not too bad actually. Right, let's get the next um, the next thing out. And like I said, this next one is a bit um, a little bit oddball, a little bit um, a little bit different. It's not a um, a personal computer you see every day. And every one that I've seen come up on um, eBay has sold for, it's either been collect only on the other side of the country or it's sold for more than I would really prepare to um, spend on it and it is a computer I've actually had my eye on for some time because I, oop. so I've just realised that my name and address are uh, right on the front of the box so um, you're going to have to just bear with me for a second well, I um, de-identify the box. Just one. Ooh. One second. I can just uh, see if I can get this bit of tape off that's got my uh, address on. I should really stop the video for this, shouldn't I? In fact, yeah, I'm going. Uh, just bear with me one second. I'll just get this um, this address off, and then I'll be right back with you. There we go, insulation tape to the rescue. No, that hasn't got my name on it at all. Right. So as I was saying, this is a um, little bit of an oddball um, personal computer. And it's an oddball personal computer um, made by IBM. And a friend of my mother, uh, back when I was probably ooh, about 10, a uh, friend of my mother's, I'd, no, I'd been, in, I'd, been, I think I'd been 11 or 12 actually, um, her son um, had one of these and it's the first personal computer, I had a Commodore 64 at the time and it's the first personal computer I ever used that had uh, Microsoft Windows on it and what we have in here I'll show you, this was IBM's second attempt at getting into the home computing market and like the first attempt, the PC Junior, they decided to non-standardise everything and it was a complete and total flop. Uh, I haven't got a clue what that is but I'll stick that to one side because I don't know if that's got any personal data on it or not. Wow. <laughs> they, uh, I think they wanted to get rid of some bubble wrap. I'm not complaining because that's how you want to find a um, computer when you uh, get it. It's just a bit of a shame that they've um, they stuck it all on one side and they didn't stick it actually around the computer. Never mind. <coughs> it is also a tiny form factor, this thing. And what we've got. Oop. Wow, they, considering I didn't pay a huge amount for this thing, they probably spent half of what I uh, paid for in bloody bubble wrap. It weren't until I'd sent the uh, money off that I realised that it was actually uh, in the same, it was in Manchester, the same as me. I could have contacted the guy and uh, probably said, can I go around and pick it up? I'd already paid and I couldn't be arsed uh, messing about by then. I was not a, got a bit of plastic broken off it and the listing did say it has got some um, physical damage on it but what we have got is oops with a broken front it did actually it does, did mention that that was broken it's got a, it should have a couple of screws well it shouldn't it should have a couple of clips holding it on and the clips are missing and someone's put some screw holes through the side to actually hold that in position um, but what we've got there is an IBM PS1 um, let me see if I can just again get you down see if you can get a slightly better look at the picture look at the front of this thing and like I said um, my mother's um, friend her son had um, one of these and that would have been in about 1991-ish. Uh, yeah, I think these came out in about 1990-ish and um, he had it in about 1991. I think he got um, bought one by his granddad. 
um, to replace his Commodore 64, which I um, I ended up with. I I actually I already had a Commodore 64, but he had a Commodore 64 since he, he was somewhat older than me, um, nearly 10 years older than me, and he had a Commodore 64 from the mid 1980s. Uh, I think he got his 64 in 84 and by the time he got this he had a disk drive, printer, various um, cheap cartridges and all sorts and when he got this he actually gave me his entire C64 setup and just said um, see if you can sell it to one of your mates if not just do what you want with it It's uh, he didn't want it, he had this well he had basically the same model as this um, this is the base model, it's a um, IBM PS1 um, 2011. It's got a 10 MHz um, 286 processor in it. Um, now what I do know is this is actually missing its hard drive, but they, you could actually buy, the base model didn't even come with a hard drive. Um, you basically just got this with a 1.2 meg um, floppy drive. Now it's interesting that it's very 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 non-standard. It hasn't got ISA um, <coughs> slots in it. Uh, it doesn't even have really the MCA slots that some of the PS2's had in them. It's got its own weird proprietary expansion system which meant that this whole thing basically sat into another system that give you some ISA, ex ISA expansion slots. You could even get a five and a quarter inch disk drive that literally locks on underneath this and doubled the size of the computer. Um, it wasn't even standard with its... Mo there is no power supply in this. Um, the power supply was actually built into the monitor and the monitor provided 36 volts at about 3 amps down to this to actually... Uh, this has got its own DC to DC converter in it, and then it provided its um, requisite voltages from that 36 volts um, coming from the monitor. It doesn't even have a speaker in it. The speaker for this was actually in the monitor. Uh, it doesn't have a sound card in it. That was just for the PC speaker. The beeper is built into the um, actual monitor and actually had a volume control on it. And quite a strange um, computer. Anyway, like I said, this one is pretty beaten up. It, um, it's not known whether it's working or not. It is definitely missing a hard drive. And again, we can't even just stick a standard hard drive in it because um, IBM and their infinite wisdom have um, made this thing non-standard in that way as well. At least this model anyway. We can't even upgrade the RAM if the RAM needs upgrading without a proprietary uh, RAM upgrade card for it. It really is that non-standard. They basically took everything they um, learned from the PC Junior, uh, which was a complete failure and did exactly the same thing again made a unexpandable or an only proprietary expandable by IBM parts very expensive home computer that flopped but anyway let's uh, originally this like I said this would have unclipped to get in there and then I believe this case I did work on uh, my friends a few years later when he um, buggered the hard drive up in it and I was had started getting into PCs and they are a, a bit of a mare to get in Ah, there we go. And there we are, we're inside it. And no, we don't have any uh, memory expansion in this one. So it's got 512k of memory. And unless I can actually make a 512k memory expansion for it, I believe you can't actually expand these over 1 meg, the original 286 version. Uh, I believe the later versions you could. Uh, the, the, one after this was a 386SX16. I think that uses a standard IDE hard drive and it used a um, standard SIMS memory. This uses a um, XT IDE hard drive standard, so it's an 8-bit IDE hard drive standard. Not only is it an 8-bit IDE um, hard drive standard, it's even a proprietary connector. Because the stand, the IDE, uh, the XT IDE, or was it called? Um, XTA, I think was the other name for it. Standard. Um, still used the standard 40 pin IDE connector. It was just an 8 bit bus, not a 16 bit bus. IBM, in their infinite wisdom, made them hard drives with a 
edge connector on them which also powered the drive, it didn't use the standard um, connect for the power supply, it actually powered it off the edge connector. So not only is it an XT-IDE hard drive the thing needs, it's also a proprietary XT-IDE hard drive. Now I do actually have somewhere in amongst my collection a little adapter that plugs into there and allows you to use a standard XT-IDE hard drive. The problem is finding an XT-IDE hard drive nowadays um, they weren't common back then. I know that some of the Amstrad um, computers, like the Amstrad CP, uh, the Amstrad um, PC range, um, they used X the, uh, the 8086 versions of them. They used XTIDE because I do remember repairing a few of them for people back back in the day, um, and they used XTIDE um, hard drives. But they're quite sought after now, the old Amstrad computers, so I'm not going to be able to just buy one of them to um, rob its hard drive out of. So we are going to have, if I want to do anything with this thing, and rather than just keep it as a curio, I will have to do something about the um, hard drive situation. I will possibly also have to do something about the RAM situation. Um, even the floppy drive in these things is proprietary. It, basically, it looks like a standard 3.5 inch... Um, 1.44 meg high density floppy drive and it basically is apart from as you can see again it pulls its power through the um, ribbon cable it doesn't pull its power from a standard um, connector on there and obviously it's one of the IBM an IBM PS2 drive I think can be modified to fit and made to work in this I, I believe that's um, that's correct <coughs> Excuse me, we have our only expansion connector inside, which is, I believe, that one there, which is, is something like the um, MCA standard, but I don't think it is MCA. Like I say, it was used to connect a 16-bit, um, six, um, I think it had three 16-bit ISA card expandable, expander board that basically doubled the size of this thing again. I think it fit on top or something like that. I've never actually seen one. Um... This one actually is fitted with a optional serial card. I think you had the option of either a um, serial card or a, a modem that fit in here. You couldn't just, there wasn't serial on board and you just connected to it. You didn't just even have a standard edge connector on there and you could just plug a ribbon cable in to get your serial out. If you can see you've actually got some logic on this board. And that was an extra board you had to buy if you wanted serial or I think I did, did they come standard with a 24 board, 2400 board modem in and you could swap that out for this and then that give you a serial so you could, obviously you could put an external modem or any other external serial device as you wanted. Um, on the back obviously we've got a tiny tiny little um, fan, it, it's, ver it's very quiet these things, I remember my friends was really quite quiet, you just got a bit of a whine from the hard drive. Um, back is fairly standard so we've got a serial port like I said on some of them that would be blanked off and you'd have a modem in there I think the one that my um, mother's friend's son um, had that had a um, serial in I don't think that had a modem in it I think that had a serial connection uh, standard PS2 style mouse and keyboard ports standard parallel port that believe it or not isn't a game port that's your powering off your monitor so you've got um, 36 volts DC into there, you've also got the audio signal from the PC speaker out of there. And then at the end we've got a standard VGA connector, like, which is just a bog standard, like any VGA monitor, one of my standard LCDs will work with it, anything. So yeah, that is basically um, the IBM, well the original model IBM um, PS1. Uh, we're not going to try and power it up in this video for the simple fact is I need to source a um, 36 or around, the, I've, looking at the technical data because I have managed to um, download the whole technical data um, system for this. Um, what is it? Basically the, what they saved for the power specifications was um, between I think it was 30 and 50 volts something like that. With a with a standardized like nominal of um, 36 volts, that's what it should generally be. But it can be anywhere between 30 volts and around 48 to 50 volts. Um, 
so we need a power supply uh, that can deliver, I think it was something like 2.86 amps. Now, bear in mind, we don't have a hard drive in here. We don't have the RAM expansion. We don't have any expansions in it at all. I don't think we can really worry about the serial. Um, but it said, I think it was about 2.8 amps or something like that. So we're, we're going to need a power supply around the 3 amp mark. I could possibly get away with something a little bit less than that just for an initial fire up and see if this thing actually does anything. Um, what else can I say? The other interesting thing about this is um, you actually have a full GUI built into ROM. Unlike you know, like most PCs and something. It has MS-DOS, I think it's four, version 4.1 built into ROM. And it also has a basic GUI system, mouse driven GUI system um, built into ROM. I remember that from um, Back, uh, back when my um, mum's friend, uh, his, her son, had one. Uh, it would be interesting to actually see that again and actually see if we can get that up and running. Like I said, we don't need anything to actually get that up and running. We just need what we've got here. So as soon as I've saw some form of power supply for it, we will actually see whether we can um, possibly get this thing up and running and then we can see what we can um, do with it. But I remember quite fondly um, going with my mother up to um, a friend's house and um, playing Commander Keen um, on her son's um, IBM PS1. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. This is already like quite a long video for um, for just a ramble on some old scrap um, vintage computers. And you will see definitely see the last two in uh, their own videos, and we actually get to see what we can do with them. You know, so you probably won't see that much about the other um, one, although you might see something about the motherboard. I don't know yet. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, foray into some um, more unusual vintage computers. So, thanks for, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.